So in this video, uh, we'll be working out how to work out when loading and generally your end result is to work out the net pressure. So I'm going to talk you through step by step how to do this according to the British standards. And the, and the British standards that we're going to be using is BS6399 part 2. So I'll just run you through some background information. So say you're in the design office and a senior engineer comes up to you and gives you the information for a part of frame. So it has a length of 74 metres and a width of 36 metres. This is the plan view. And if you look at the elevation, uh, the width you see is 36 metres. And so the background information that you're given is that the location of this portal frame is in Durham. Um, so that's what you're given. And for working out the wind loading, we're going to be needing the following information. So I've looked this up. Um, so the exact address of the location uh, gives you a site altitude of 88.8 .8 metres. So the definition of altitude is the height above sea level of the location. So for this instance, from the height of the sea to the actual location, vertical distance is 88.8 .8 metres. Um, the closest distance to the sea, so from the location to where the sea is, is 10.4 kilonewtons. And what you also need to know is that it's a monopitched roof. So on this port frame it's monopitched. Monopitched means a single sloping roof surface. Um, and also you need to know that the roof has a pitch angle of 5 degrees. Also I thought I'd just point out in this sketch here. So for example this is a port frame, it's monopitched. So it's got a single sloping roof. And this is the gable end. That's what this is known as, the gable end. So, step one. Um, for the wind loading, you're going to be needing British standards BS6399 part two. The first, the first thing you're going to work out is the dynamic pressure, which has this symbol here, QS. And this can be found in 2.1.2 of the British standard. So QS is 0.613 times VE squared. VE stands for effective wind speed and the units for that is meters per second. In order to work out VE, we need to then move on to step two. So step two states that VE equals VS times VB. So VS is the site wind speed and VB is the basic wind speed. So Vs can be determined by looking up, uh, looking it up in part 2.2.2 .2 and Vb 2.2.1. So when you go to 2.2.2 for Vs, it gives you this long formula to work out the sight wind speed. So Vs equals Vb times Sa times Sd times Ss times SP. So each one of these, SD stands for direction factor. So direction factor is, is, is to do with the orientation of the building. And as for this instance, the orientation of the building is unknown. Therefore, the direction factor should be taken as one. So I have it down as one. Next is SS, which represents seasonal factor. So the seasonal factor for a permanent building or building exposed to wind for a continuous period or more than six months has a value of one. So one should be used for that. So therefore I'm using one for my seasonal factor. And for probability factor, this is used to account for the basic wind speed being exceeded from the standard value. You, using a probability factor of one would, would account for that. So now that we have three out of five, we can go ahead and work out VB. So VB, if you remember, if I take you one step back, is the basic wind speed. And if we look at 2.2.1, we will be able to work out VB. So I have printed off for you guys here, VB. 
So I have for you guys here, um, printed off at 2.2.1 for VB, the basic wind speed, figure 6 you need to use. And what you need to do is uh, basically find on this map of the, of, of the UK where exactly your building is going to be. So I've already found mine over here. I show you. So we already know it's in Durham, and I've I know I've pinpointed it, and it's between the wind speed curves of 24 and 25. So I'm going to use a value of VB 24.5. So now I know my VB value. This is also from BS 6399 Part Two. Right. So now we have our direction factor, seasonal factor, probability factor. We have the basic wind speed. Now the only thing left to determine is SA and SA stands for altitude factor. So if you look if you look in the British standards BS 6399 part 2 you will find SA equals 1 plus 0 0.001 delta S. Now delta S stands for psi altitude which is why in, in one of the very first uh, earlier card notes I made I put in the psi altitude I looked it up. So I know it's 88.8, .8, so I put this into the formula and I get a SA value of 1.0888. So now I have all the parameters I need to work out the site wind speed BS. So what I can do is just put them into the formula and I get a site wind speed of 26.70 meters per second. So for step four, the next step is to work out the effective wind speed, VE. So VE equals VS, which you just worked out, times SB. So VS, the one that we just worked out, is site wind speed. And SB stands for the terrain and building factor. And this can be found under 2.2.3.3. So if we look at table four, and we know our height of our portal frame is 7.35 meters. So I'm, I'm going to show you the table in a minute. However, we don't have a 7.355 meters. We have a 10 meter, so we're going to use the 10 meter category. I've already measured the distance from the location to the cl the closest distance to the sea, and that gave me 10 point uh, gave me 10 kilonewtons. Therefore, using table four, I can determine that the terrain and building factor is 1.73 so I'm just going to show you table 4 now. So this again is the British Standard BS 6399 part 2 and as I stated before under section 2.2.3.3 the terrain and building factor Table 4, you can determine uh, your SB factor. So, like I said, our height of the portal frame is 10.73 meters. So, you pick 10 meters as it's the closest one. Site in country are up to 2 meters into the town. So, the location of this portal frame is within town. So, I, I know I'm using this side of the table and I'm not using this side of the table. And I also know the closest distance the C is 10 kilometers therefore I've highlighted that I've highlighted that and I found that my SV value is 1.73 so now that I have my SV value which is 1.73 I can put it into the VE effective wind speed formula, uh, formula VS times VB and I know my VS is 26.70 which is what we previously worked out times the VB, 1.73, gives me an effective wind speed of 46.191 meters per second. So now we are getting, we're a step closer to working out our net pressure. So once we have our VE, which is what I've just, what we've just worked out over here, we can go back and work out our dynamic pressure, which is this formula here, QS equals 0. 613 times VE. So we put in that value there and we get a dynamic pressure of 1.307 kilonewtons per meter squared. Ok, 
Okay, so now we're on step five. We need to work out the external surface pressure. So this is a formula for the external surface pressure. But before I move on to explaining that, I just want to quickly run through and explain this. So in order to work out the, surf, uh, the external surface pressure, we need to know what the diagonal length is of the gable end of the portal frame. So we know it's 36 meters wide and we know it's 7.3 meters in height of the portal frame. So this is the Pythagoras theorem, basically is what you're using to determine the diagonal length, which we get is 36.73 meters. So now I'll move on to explain the PE, the external pressure, the ex external surface pressure formula. So QS stands for dynamic pressure. CPE stands for external pressure coefficient for the building surface. And CA stands for size effect factor. And for that we need to use figure 4, which I will show you in. So this is figure 4 once again, it's from the BS6399 part 2 and we're going to be needing to use this table plus this graph here. So we know the effective height is between 5 to 10 meters as it's 7.35 meters, the portal frame, the height of the portal frame. Closest distance to C, so we know it's 10 kilometers, so we're going to be using between here 10 to 100. We know we want to be reading off B. So we know our diagonal dimension is let's just say 36 meters. Plus here we want to read off the, at the 36 meter point. So that's 10, 20, 30, 40. So it's going to be there. We need to mark off at, at the diagonal line B and read across in order to get our size factor CA. So as you can see it's 0.86. So now we have our CA value, which is what I have written down here, 0 0.86. The next thing to work out would be the external pressure coefficient CPE for our formula here. Which then leads us on to step 6 to work out the CPE, the external pressure coefficient. We need to be looking at table 9 so I'm just going to highlight the information that I'll be looking at table 9 and then show you table 9 so the pitch angle is 5 degrees it's uh, the zone is 90 degrees so the wind is being applied uh, at 90 degrees and with whether the direction of the wind the building is split up into ABC zones and we're looking at B zone Therefore, from table 9, we will be able to work out CPE is negative 1.1. So, this here, as you can see, is table 9, external pressure coefficients for monopitch roofs of buildings. So, we know our roof is at 5 degrees angle and it's B, the section B, the zone B that we want to look at. So if I just show you this here, this is figure 19, the key for mono pitched roofs. So we know our zone because it's a gable end. So this here and the mono pitch would be the gable end. Similarly, this would be the gable end here. We know that we want to be looking at this area because that's where the wind is hitting. Is, is most effective so it's in this direction so it's saying it's at 90 degrees and therefore we know when looking at this here it needs to we need to be looking at zone 90 and not zero and not 180 but 90 so we also know it's b that we're interested in therefore looking at this here and we know it's 5 degree pitch, therefore we have our CPE value negative 1.1. I hope that's clear. So now that we have our CPE value 
and we know our QS value and we've just worked out our CA value, we can go in and put in all these values here. So that's QS, that's the CPE and that's the CA and we'll get our, our external surface pressure value which is negative 1.24 kilonewtons per meter squared. So now we're on to step seven. Now remember at the beginning I said that the with working out wind pressure, what you want to work out is the net pressure. So to work out the net pressure, it's the external pressure minus the internal pressure. So we've just worked out the external pressure, PE. So now we need to work out the internal pressure, which stands for internal surface of a building. Is this for in this formula here that we need. So QS we have, this we have, this we don't have. So this is what we need to work out. So like I said, dynamic pressure we have, we worked out. CPI stands for internal pressure coefficient. For that, we're going to be needing table 16 of the British Standard BS 1699 part two. But if you were to go to the British Standard and, and look it up at table 16, it would say that for a wind normal to the permeable phase, CPI equals positive 0 0.2 and wind normal to impermeable phase, CPI equals negative 0 0.3. The word permeable means allowing liquid or gas to pass through and impermeable is obviously the opposite, so not allowing liquid or gas to pass through. Therefore, you have two internal pressure coefficients to consider when determining the PI internal surface pressure. Effectively, we're going to have two PI values, one for the permeable, one for the impermeable. So we put in our QS value, the CPI value, times the CA value. And so for the permeable PI value, you get 0 0.225. And for the impermeable PI value, you get 0 0.34. Now the next step, step A, is to work out the net surface pressure. So we have PE and we have PI. All that's left to do is to follow this formula. So net surface pressure equals PE minus PI, so the external minus the internal. So previously we worked out the external and we've got that to be negative 1.24 kilonewtons per meter squared. So we can go ahead and put our PIs and our sorry our PEs and our PIs in and we'll get the impermeable value which is the negative 0 0.158 kilonewtons per meter squared and the permeable value which is negative 1.015 kilonewtons per meter squared. Therefore the net pressure value is considered 1.58 negative 1.58 kilonewtons per meter squared. And that is how you determine the wind loading. Uh, I hope that made sense. For any questions, just comment down below and uh, hopefully I'll get back to you guys to answer them. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.